Which committees? <laughs> the IGA committee. Uh, this is the first uh, committee meeting that I've conducted in this committee. How, or did, it's your second, second one, isn't it? Oh, then I, I can do uh, without the uh, perfunctory remarks. Okay, item number one. Um, Councilman, would you like to take items number one and two together? They both concern the uh, President's Job Act? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Item number one is a resolution Garcetti Reyes relative to the city's position on President Obama's American Jobs Act and further job creation measures until the jobs crisis is solved and requests uh, Los Angeles receive funds proportioned to its high rate of unemployment. And item two is a resolution Cardenas Parks et al relative to the city's position on President Obama's American Jobs Act or similar legislation, which would cut payroll taxes, provide tax credits, invest in infrastructure, fund teachers and first responders, stabilize neighborhoods and reform the unemployment system. Clay McCarter with our office is here to present. Good afternoon, Clay McCarter, Office of the CLA. The American Jobs Act was introduced in the Senate as S 1549 on September 13th, 2011. The $447 billion bill provides tax cuts and credits worth $253 billion. This includes a payroll tax cut for businesses and employees and incentives to hire veterans and the long-term unemployed. The bill also includes employment projects valued at $89 billion. This includes reforming the unemployment insurance system, preventing teacher, police officer, and firefighter layoffs, providing low-income youth and adult workforce initiatives, as well as infrastructure projects valued at $105 billion, which include transportation infrastructure investments and school modernization. The Act proposes several changes to tax law that are projected to raise sufficient revenue to fund the provisions in the legislation. And I'd like to focus on one of those right now. The bill caps the value of all itemized deductions and certain other tax expenditures at 28% for individuals with an income of $200,000 or more and for families with an income of $250,000 or more. And this result in a new tax of 7% for those in the 35% tax bracket. And I point that out because by capping the benefit of the tax-exempt income, the Act has the potential of increasing the city's borrowing costs because municipal bonds have long been an attractive investment strategy due to their tax-free status. And municipal bond analysts have reported that high-income municipal bond investors could demand higher yields on these bonds in order, to in order to recover this tax. In order to attract investors, the city might have to offer investors higher interest rates, increasing our borrowing costs. This provision was removed in the version of the bill voted on by the Senate recently. The city may wish to take a position on this provision should it come up in the future. And to give you a, a, a status on the current state of the bill, the Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid introduced S-1660, which is a new version of the bill, that substituted the Act's tax changes with a 5.6% tax on earnings above $1 million as the funding mechanism for the bill. On October 11, 2011, this legislation was voted on in the Senate and failed to receive the 60 votes required for debate. Senator Reid plans to separate the legislation and hold votes on select provisions over the coming weeks. The first provision to be considered will be the $35 billion payment to states for the hiring or retention of teachers and first responders. The bill would be paid for by a half percent tax on individuals or couples who earn more than $1 million annually. And both the resolutions speak to supporting other job creation measures as well as the American Jobs Act, so we recommend you adopt both resolutions. Okay. Um, the, wh what are the specific ramifications to Los Angeles? Well, because the, the wealthy investors in the 35% tax bracket are able to to, cre to um, get a tax break on if they invest in the, the city's bonds. And the act would have capped that at 28%. So they would have been able to get that 7%, that 7 difference would have been a, a sort of new tax on the investor. And so analysts have projected that these investors would would ask this or would, would demand a higher interest rate from cities and states in order to recover that new tax. So that could impact the city, but that provision was removed from the bill in its current. So we might want to um, support the uh, exclusion of that provision? Yes. Uh, how, how, yes how, what would the language be to do that? I think to support, we want to support the resolutions, 
Yes. But we want to be careful not to include. And I think the resolution is, is okay as, as, as current state because mm -hmm. it, it supports the act itself and similar legislation that does a variety of what the act spells out to do. So I think we're still, we're still okay by keeping the resolution as is and supporting those other parts okay. of the legislation. Okay. Um, now, you said the 35%. Mm -hmm. um, what, what income level is that? That would be the 200000 or greater for individuals and the 250000 for Okay, now when I was in the legislature, we did a survey of the public, and we were at that point we were talking about a 1% increase in the state franchise tax on, on the top 2%, which I believe is people that make more than $250,000 a year. We did a survey, and we found that... Um, there was a strong 35% that opposed the measure. Now we're talking about the top 2%. So when, it, when you dig a little deeper, there were some, uh, uh, pe f there was a f the first group, the first batch were people who just opposed any tax increase, okay? Mm -hmm. We take those for granted. But then there was 19% of that, uh, of out of that 35, uh, so more than half, Mm -hmm. that voted against the increase because they thought they were in the top 2%. And they weren't anywhere near it. Uh, so, oh, I know what it was. They, were, they voted against it because they thought they were in the top 2%. The other group voted against it because they wanted to be in the top 2% and believed they would get there. Oh, without, okay. When in reality, none of them were, are likely to ever be in the top 2%. So... I, I wanted to say that because I, I think people need to understand that uh, we're talking about people that make more than $200,000 a year, and, and that's not a whole lot of people. In the city's workforce, it represents less than 1%, uh, and, and I think uh, in, in, in the general public, it, less, it, it represents a, a very small uh, group, even, even in Los Angeles where we have a lot of very wealthy people. So uh, it's important for us to let the public know that that uh, the vast majority, 65% of the people, would actually see a reduction. Is that yeah. that's the the premise? At the same time, we would uh, create jobs for the unemployed and laid off, and and uh, uh, create educational opportunities for where our school district is cutting teacher jobs. We would be able to expand our teacher ranks um, and. Uh, it very is very much a, a focused stimulus bill as opposed to just giving a bunch of money to banks and letting them hold on to it and then paying it back when they feel they, they can. This actually has a, a plan to stimulate the economy in very specific ways, uh, ensuring that the money trickles down, not hoping that it will, which is what the first stimulus bill did, I think. So with that, um, we have... Uh, Two cards. Is there anybody else uh, from the city that wanted to speak on this? Greg, did you want to say something? Never, never failing to take the mic if offered. Uh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the name is Greg Irish. I'm the executive director of the WIB. Uh, President Obama's plan is actually half the size of the first stimulus, $417 billion. In it, inclu it includes a number of provisions for workforce development, as well as, as you mentioned, putting people back to work, specifically first responders and teachers, et cetera. It includes a provision for rehabbing abandoned homes or homes in foreclosure to create construction jobs. It also restores a summer jobs allocation as well. Uh, so we're totally supportive of it. There's some money, extra money for job training uh, on top of that. Uh, so it's a good plan. The president indicated that he would break up pieces of it, present it to the Senate, because it was rejected in the Senate as, a, as an entire document. Um, there's some question, though, because it's also been presented to the Super Committee on Debt Reduction, because he's also proposing a number of mechanisms, including the Buffett Rule, which would impose a surcharge tax on those who make their money from investment income. As you know, Warren Buffett says he pays less taxes than his secretary. So we're totally supportive of it. It has a workforce development component. There is also an infrastructure fund, an infrastructure bank included in it as well uh, for investments. It focuses on transportation projects. As you know, we're focusing on that in terms of uh, America Fast Forward. It includes, other than that, a focus on high-speed rail uh, and a focus on, other than transportation, 
uh, some other public works projects as well. So we think this is a positive uh, move, step forward by the president to deal with unemployment currently in the nation, and hopefully uh, it'll be a piecemeal thing going through Congress, but we don't know what will happen. And uh, just a, a final question, is this uh, by formula? Or is uh, it, it would end up being by formula, yes. And, we would get our fair share. Of course, California gets more than any other state. Do you know what the, what the, what the formula is? Uh, well, currently, under the old stimulus, the, the first stimulus plan, we've got uh, the city of L.A. received $50 million. Uh, and again, that was $900 billion. This is half that amount. We would probably, I'd have to check on the numbers for workforce development because that old plan was a third taxes and then other elements. Uh, this one is not in the same balance, so it may be significantly less. Okay. Well, thank you, Greg. Councilman. Um, yes. John Wickham, CLA. The, the first motion in front of you, Garcetti Reyes, actually talks about seeking a proportionate share of the funding based on the city's high unemployment rate. So one of the components in the city action that's before you is to ensure that, that we get a fair, the city of L.A. gets a fair share. So of that funding. the formula would be based on unemployment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, our first uh, public commenter is uh, Rusty Hicks. Good afternoon, Councilman. Uh, my name is Rusty Hicks. I'm with the L.A. County Federation of Labor, and today I have the uh, honor of speaking on behalf of 800,000 working men and women all across uh, the county of Los Angeles, and we stand in strong support of the uh, American Jobs Act. Um, we all know the numbers. Many of them are in the resolution. 9% uh, unemployment across the country, 12% in California, almost 15% in L.A., and as high as 20% and, and above in, in communities of color. Um, but in many ways, we always talk about these things in numbers. Um, and when we talk in numbers, we lose sight of the faces of those who actually have to deal with us on a daily basis. We lose sight of the young teacher who's laid off because of devastating cuts in education. We, uh, we lose sight of the construction worker who, um, whose home is foreclosed on and uh, has to make a decision of whether he relies on the generosity of friends and family or takes his family and lives in his car. Um, we forget the battle-tested veteran who comes back from Afghanistan, finds herself homeless here in L.A. Uh, because there's no job uh, for her once she returns. Um, these are all sad stories. That's very good. These are all sad stories, but these folks are not asking for our sympathy. They're not asking for our pity. Uh, they're only asking for the opportunity to do the job they were trained to do. Um, and. They want to provide for their families. They want to clothe them, feed them, put a roof over their head, and ensure that they are safe and secure. Um, and so the American Jobs Act is, is the first down payment on making that happen, building roads and bridges, putting teachers back in schools, firefighters, police officers on our streets, helping small businesses, and for that veteran, uh, ensuring they have an opportunity once they've uh, sacrificed for all of us. Um, and so. Uh, we need the American Jobs Act now. L.A. needs it now. Uh, obviously, the details are yet to be worked out, um, but we hope that you'll support this resolution, and uh, we're in strong support. Thank you. If, uh, uh, when, when this matter goes forward to city council, uh, w you know, I think it's real important for the public to, uh, to really understand what it's about. It's, very, it's sort of like tipping cows when, when they say, well, this is a tax bill, you know, sure. and, and uh, and uh, it will be it can be undermined so easily in the minds of of, of, of many um, so it would it would be very helpful if the constituencies that would be positively impacted by this bill could come forward on the day this goes to council so uh, are your your troops ready to roll we'll make sure they're here great right. um, thank you let's see our second uh, speaker doesn't have a name This is uh, the organization is California Partnership. Forgot to put your name. <laughs> Here, I'll give it back. To, um, yeah, maybe you can. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Thanks for letting me testify. My name is Astrid Campos. I'm with California Partnership. We're a special project of Center for Community Change. Um, we are a statewide coalition of community-based organizations um, that fight poverty in California. 
through organizing and advocacy, we work on common goals in the local, statewide, and national level to reduce and end poverty. I am here today, along with our coalition partners, um, in strong support for this resolution. Um, I work in LA and statewide with low-income communities of color, and to protect low-income and communities of color, to protect and ex expand programs that reduce and end poverty. In Los Angeles, the unemployment rate is higher than 14%, almost at 15. Underemployment in, with Angelinos is over 20%. And at a time when cities and state, city and the state is being forced to cut the programs and services that our communities need the most, um, the American Jobs Act would help to create jobs and reduce and get our economy moving again. With so many in our communities out of work, America needs a bold action by the federal government to boost the economy and help create jobs. For months, rather than addressing the big problems, Congress has wasted time worrying about the deficit. With so much suffering, now is not the time to focus on deficits and cuts. It's time to focus on jobs. The President has proposed a good jobs plan, and we are hoping that your committee will adopt this resolution and send a clear message and signal to the Senate that the city of Los Angeles needs jobs, not cuts. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we uh, don't have any other cards on this matter. Uh, this is uh, sort of given the, the uh, situation in Los Angeles, um, sort of a slam dunk uh, that uh, we need these resources uh, and we need the federal government to continue to, to uh, do what it can to stimulate our economy throughout the nation. Uh, and so um, it will be my recommendation to move this forward to City Council uh, with our support with uh, perhaps the one is where where do you go? Your Clay. guy left. Clay. Oh, there he is. I'm sorry. Blend right into the audience. How exactly would you like to, s to state that concern about the uh, tax? Um, if you would like, I can, I can amend one of the resolutions to include that concern. The well, they've taken it out of the bills, right? They've taken yeah, it out of the bill. Know. If you wanted to simply instruct the CLA to monitor that, that language and return to council with a follow-up recommendation, if there's a change, we could do that. Or yeah, you would. Uh, yeah, okay, let's do it that way. I, I think the way to, to say it would be that we support the exclusion of that provision, yeah. Uh, but um, we don't have to do that. Yeah. So let's let's keep an eye on it. If it reemerges, uh, we can we can modify it at that point. Yeah. That way, you have a simple support on the the Jobs Act as it Absolutely. is now. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That will be the recommendation. Thank you. Okay. Item number three. Item three is resolution Han Reyes relative to the city's position on full funding for the Workforce and Investment Act program for the current fiscal. Federal fiscal year at, at levels proposed by the Obama administration, as well as continued full funding during the next fiscal year 2012. Good afternoon, Felipe Chavez with the CLA's office. Uh, before you is a resolution, Han Reyes recommending support of, uh, for full funding of the Workforce Investment Act for pro, uh, program for the current federal fiscal year 2011, uh, the previous. Um, federal fiscal year 2011 and the levels proposed by the president in his fiscal year 2011 budget as well as continued full funding for fiscal year 2012. Now uh, funding for 2011 has already been cut. Um, if you want to I can uh, go over the numbers that were actually. I don't, I don't need to know the numbers but uh, so you're saying that the action has already taken place? For, for 2011, correct. For 2011 so would we want to modify this resolution? Yes. How, and how would we modify it? Yeah, 1473 was when the... Could you introduce yourself? Yes, Greg Irish, uh, workforce in the City of Los Angeles Workforce Investment Board. 1473 uh, pertained to the 2011 federal budget. When uh, the Republicans were threatening a close down of government, the president compromised in exchange for not going after increased taxes on the rich uh, and getting unemployment benefits extended. There were some cuts. We experienced a 10% cut. That issue's over with. The federal budget, as you know, goes from October 1st through September 30th. We are in FY 2012 now. There is still a threat of cuts. Actually, Congress and the President, in exchange for the debt ceiling agreement, agreed to cut $917 billion from the federal budget between now, 2012, and 2021. 
to do that through the normal appropriations process, they're going to have to look at every program. So we're expecting that there'll be cuts further to the Workforce Investment Act uh, as a result of this year as well and years to come. Other than the $917 billion, there's the other issue with raising the debt ceiling a second time, which will happen sometime in March, but that's before the Super Committee. So there are a number of actions we've got to deal with coming up, upcoming actions. It would be great if the Council took a position, in as much as the Council is saying it'll take a position with regard to the American Jobs Act, that it would also take a position yeah. opposing cuts to the workforce investment. Relative to the Han Reyes resolution, how could we modify that language to... Do we need to capture all of that in that in this one resolution, or no, is there a way to modify just, this? So to modify specific? it to simply say that you oppose, you would oppose cuts to the Workforce Investment Act and the Workforce Development System in FY to, in federal fiscal year 2012. Yes, that sounds perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I like it when people agree. I don't have any public comment cards on this, uh, and that meets with my approval. Um, so uh, I would recommend that we. Uh, modify this uh, resolution uh, as uh, recommended um, and move this item forward to council. Very thank good. you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Item number four. Item number four is a Board of Library Commissioners report relative to the city's position on H.R. 1616 Holt proposing to amend the Work Investment Act to include public libraries. I would note that the CLA does have a report on file now and um, our report to you includes a resolution to, um, to effect this action included in the federal legislative program. So in approving the report, we would be approving the resolution? Yes. And moving that on to council for further approval? Correct. Okay. Please. Andrea Galvin, Office of the CLA. Our office recommends the adoption of a resolution to support H.R. 1616. This resolution would amend the Workforce Inve Investment Act of 1998 to include library representation on state and local workforce investment boards, to assure coordination of employment, training, and literacy services, and to allow libraries to become a one-stop partner which would use new demonstration and pilot projects to establish employment resources in public libraries. Um, the resolution that the library commissioners adopted in May of 2011 to support H.R. 1616 stated that um, an American Library Association survey found that the majority of American people visit libraries for job search assistance and over 80 percent of public libraries provide access to jobs databases and other related resources so it naturally makes sense that they would be included. Very good. Greg Irish for the Workforce Investment Board. A great idea. We're already working with the department and with the commission to see where there are some synergies for us to uh, actually include uh, the libraries within our system. As was mentioned, uh, almost 40-some percent of those who are using libraries in the city of L.A. are actually looking for jobs. Uh, the Workforce Investment Board supports this legislation. It was considered by the board and supported, so we're in total support. Okay, so uh, this measure actually is coming forward directly out of the CLA's office? Um, it came to the council from the Board of Library Commissioners. Oh, I see. And we have done an analysis of, of that okay. report from the commission. Okay, then uh, we will... Uh, Send this on to council with my recommendation for uh, support uh, as represented in the uh, CLA's report. Very Thank good. you, Mr. Very good. Great. Item number five. Uh, this is a CLA report and resolution. Rosendahl Reyes et al. relative to the city's position on legislati legislation or administrative action to fully fund summer youth employment programs nationwide. Clay McCarter is here again. Good afternoon. Clay McCarter, CLA. According to the Community Development Department, nearly 20% of youth in Los Angeles are disconnected from education and employment. In 2009, the city's workforce development system received a one-time allocation of $44.8 million in adult dislocated worker youth and rapid response funds from the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. With this stimulus funding, the, SERP, the system was able to provide over $26 million towards summer youth employment programs, providing jobs to over 7,500 youth during the summer of 2009 and over 9,000 during the summer of 2010. As these ARA funds were only available for expenditure until June 30, 2011, federal funding, for the federal funding for program year 2011-12 has been eliminated. CDD has identified over 7.6 million in alternative funding sources, which is projected to result in almost 4,000 jobs for the youth of Los Angeles. By funding summer youth programs, the federal government can help cities across the country 
address the growing youth unemployment rate, and we recommend adoption of the resolution. Mr. Chairman, Greg Irish again for the WIP. You're familiar with this program. Actually, in the previous year, last summer, uh, we think we'll probably end up, when we tally all of our numbers, four to 5,000 kids would be served. Uh, after the stimulus money was ex exhausted the previous year, the council came up with general fund money. You, as a council member, used some of your personal account. Uh, your I didn't. I didn't tell him to say that. No, no. I, I know where the money came from. Believe me. But he just knows how to play this <laughs> game. Let me. I tell know you. where this money is. Um, the, the federal government. You are welcome to testify before my committee anytime. I, I certainly Thank will. you, Mr. Irish. Has disinvested in in programs for youth in the summer jobs program. This city has remained committed to it with general fund money, money from individuals, council members' accounts. We think the federal government should uh, reinvest in the system. It is part of the America's Job Act, uh, the Americans' Job Act. Um, we think this is worthwhile. Again, we have so many disconnected young people in our in our city, mm -hmm. uh, and we also have an unemployment rate that's 14 percent. This is of, of benefit to our city. Yeah, we were actually able to hire about 20 um, uh, summer youth employment workers out of our office, um, and I'm sure the hundred thousand dollars that we uh, contributed out of the Lopez Canyon fund actually right. uh, for kids in that area. Um, f easily covers the, the amount of money that it costs. But beyond that, um, I'm very pleased to say that we've hired five of them um, Fantastic. Uh, uh, as permanent employees. And uh, in fact, I was just discussing with my staff and we're, we're going to find the resources to squeeze out uh, full-time opportunities for these kids. So, um, uh, and what they are doing is providing a valuable service to the office. They, we call it city ambassadors and they they uh, primarily provide information to the community on how to use the city services. Uh, so they, uh, they will seek out potholes, they will seek out uh, trees, but based on, on uh, going door to door uh, and phone banking, uh, letting uh, people know of these services and how to utilize these services. In my district, um, you know, it's funny because Bill Rosendahl always uh, talks about how he, his constituents always call the office. And it's absolutely true that his constituency calls with greater frequency than mine because uh, many people in my district don't know how to use it or are intimidated by the process. So these uh, city ambassadors are exactly what, what we needed to reach out to them and tell them, hey, we're here to ask you if there's any way we can serve you. And so um, I, I'm, it's, I think it's gonna be a great year uh, working with these young people. And uh, uh, it's opened their eyes to other possibilities as well. So it's, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. And hope, so next year, hopefully I won't have to use Lopez Canyon funds to do the same thing. We may still ask you for that. But if we have to, <laughs> uh, we can certainly do that. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, then that matter moves forward with, uh, our, uh, with my strong support. Item number six, our final item. Uh, this is a resolution, LaBanche Garcetti, relative to the well, city. I'm sorry, we have uh, eight items. Yes. Yeah. Number six. Relative to the city's position on legislation and or administrative actions, which would approve and implement the recommendations made by the U.S. Travel Association in its recent report entitled Ready for Takeoff, a plan to create 1.3 million U.S. jobs by welcoming millions of international travelers. Felipe Chavez is here. Good afternoon. Felipe Chavez with the CLD's office. Before you is another resolution, the Bunch Garcetti recommending support for legislation or administrative actions which would approve and implement the recommendations made by the U.S. Travel Association in its recent re report entitled Ready for Takeoff, a plan to create 1.3 million jobs by welcoming millions of international travelers. Um, the report contains 34 recommendations to basically overcome existing barriers to the growth of uh, international travel to the United States. Um, it basically streamlines the uh, U.S. visa system. Um, I can go over some of the recommendations. If or you could just um, explain how this works. I mean, my staff explained it to me, but it's, it's relatively simple. So what, what is it this, this bill would do? This bill would basically um, allow uh, for changes in the U.S. visa system to allow, to basically move, remove certain barriers uh, such as the wait time for application for, for the visa itself. It would also create more centers in different countries throughout the world, and it would um, um, allow for expansion of the visa waiver program to allow more countries to participate in it. There are a number of countries that this report believes should be part of the program um, that would encourage 
which would encourage travelers to come to the United States. Okay, thank you. We have one card, uh, Kathy Smith. Thank you. On behalf of LA Inc., the Los Angeles Convention and Visitors Bureau, just wanted to take a brief moment to speak in support of Ready for Takeoff and your resolution. As an organization, LA Inc. has been actively marketing Los Angeles to international travelers. And as you know, international travelers tend to stay longer and spend more, which in the end means more jobs in our region. As you also know, tourism is the largest industry in Los Angeles and employs approximately 400,000 people in LA County. What's interesting, though, is that over the last decade, while the number of travelers worldwide has increased by 60 million, the number visiting the United States has not kept up with that growth at all. And in large part, it's because the U.S. has made it very, very difficult for international travelers to visit, in large part because of the burdensome U.S. visa system. I'm just going to give you one example that highlights this. L.A. welcomed more than 273,000 visitors from China alone in 2010, and that was a 73% increase from 2009. Chinese visitors spent $270 million in the Los Angeles Basin in 2010, visiting our hotels, attractions, shopping, dining, etc. We could easily double that number if the visa process weren't so daunting. In China, if you want to visit the U.S., you often wait for more than 145 days. There are only five consular offices that are even capable of processing U.S. visas in all of China. Yet there are 27 Chinese cities with populations greater than 2 million. So would you wait 145 days for a visa? There are a lot of places to travel and a lot of competition. And this is just one example. I could share more in Brazil, in India, et cetera. So if we want jobs to grow here and throughout the United States without spending any taxpayer money, we need to change the way we do business, and it really starts with visa reform. According to research by the U.S. Travel Association, which is the organization that's really leading the cause, we can create 1.3 million jobs and add $859 billion in economic output to the GDP if we can return our market share. So smart visa reform is the first step. Thank you. Thank you. That was excellent. Um, okay, so I, I obviously would support this measure and want to get it to council, uh, so that would be my recommendation. And, you know, I just spoke about the, the summer youth employment workers, and they walked in. So <laughs> speak on item number four. Oh, they're going to they're gonna speak on item number four? Yeah. Uh, that matter's already done. But I'll use my executive uh, uh, Reconsider privilege. Reconsider item four. And to reconsider item number four. All in favor? I'm in favor. So <laughs> with that, uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, we'll return to item number four very quickly and have the uh, – did you have uh, – did they want to make comments? Um, okay. Do we, we're we're going to go on to items number seven and eight and come back to item number four, uh, but they have to fill out cards, whoever, whoever is going to speak. Okay, great. Uh, item number seven? Item number seven is Resolution Alarcon Wesson relative to the city's position on the California jobs budget as proposed by Assembly Speaker John A. Perez, which proposes to close the budget deficit while creating jobs and any amendment to the California jobs budget or any 2010-11 state budget proposal that takes redevelopment funds. So um, this measure is finished and closed out. Um, yeah, the, the state passed their budget, and so we would... Recommend note and file on okay. this well, That matter will be note, noted and filed. Uh, item number eight. Item number eight is Resolution Parks Perry relative to the city's position on S2778 Boxer, which would reauthorize the Public Works and Economic Development Act of 1965 in order to provide various types of funding assistance to encourage economic development in distressed communities. Again, this is a matter um, that is closed. It was introduced in the 0910 legislative session is no longer... Uh, a live bill, so we recommend note and file. Okay, then uh, that item would be recommended for noting and filing as well. Now we will return to item number four, and may we have the cards.
Okay, our first card is, ooh, <laughs> Brenda Ramirez. Please state your name for the record. Brenda Ramirez. Okay. All right. Um, I just want to extend my gratitude towards um, participating in the youth program that we had over the summer. And I mean, I met a lot of great people and I found out a lot of things in my community that I really need to take care of and tell other people to help clean it up as well. And i just like to say that it was a really great opportunity and I hope to extend exactly what I, I've learned and what I'm grateful for doing during the summer. Thank you very much. You. Our next speaker is I hate wearing these glasses, but that's why. I forgot mine. Oh, it's <laughs> Joseph Armstrong. Good afternoon, council member. Good afternoon. Um, well, um, first of all... state your name for the record? Joseph Armstrong from Pacoima. Um, first of all, I'm really grateful. Not only am I grateful, I'm thankful for the opportunity of just being a part of the City Ambassador Youth Program that you have for us for the summer. It got me a chance to um, not only uh, have a start, but start over from where I had left off in life. Like, I, didn't compl I wasn't completing school, but the, my council member, you allowed me to show my leadership skills in the community, which allowed me to go back into school and go back to get, go where, where I left off at. So now I can continue on in the community. I can continue on making, making my life better and making my family lives better by involving myself in the community and stuff like that, which I'm really grateful for. Thank you. So you uh, are in favor or opposed to this measure? I'm in favor of it. Okay, great. I'm grateful for it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, the, th the next speaker is Luis Tendeja. Okay. Luis Tendeja. Um, I'm very grateful for this opportunity because it, I really got to see my potential and what I could do to help out my community because before I, I did not know I could make such a difference within like these within what I could see. Like if there was trash in the sidewalk, I don't know if you could call, I just thought it was just something they picked up, you know? Um, I, I really got to see how much power I had and I, how much my voice really does make a difference. And for that I'm very thankful and grateful for everything that I had to do what I was able to do, because without that, I wouldn't be able to see my potential and uh, see what I could do to help out the community and help out myself as well. So you support this measure as well? Yes. Okay, good answer. Um, that's all the cards that I have. Uh, I want to, just before you stepped in, I was explaining to the audience that we hired, uh, I said five, but I, I realize now it's six, uh, summer youth employment workers to be retained in our office as regular city employees. Um, we had uh, budgeted for 15 hours a week, but um, in consultation with my staff and bearing down on our budget and looking at our numbers, um, I, w I want to let you know that, that we have full-time opportunities available to all of you. So if you are in a position to do that, um, you're welcome aboard. and. Uh, for those of you that are continuing in school, uh, we obviously want you to, to do, uh, that is your top priority, okay? So, uh, but if you uh, would like to accept a position, um, we'll be happy to extend that to you. Okay, so it's officially announced, so I can't uh, go back on my word now. Um, but with that, this matter is approved, uh, and uh, uh, I think that completes our business, not having any more public comment cards. Uh, this meeting is adjourned.